This week on Hands-On Photography, we're going to talk about layers and photos and images and all kinds of stuff inside of Photoshop. And we're also going to talk about layer mask. Check it out. Hands-On Photography is brought to you from LastPass Studios. Using the same password everywhere is a security nightmare waiting to happen. LastPass easily creates unique passwords for every site. Visit lastpass.com slash twit. This is Twit. Hey folks, I'm Ant Pruitt. This is Hands-On Photography here on twitch.tv at the wonderful Last Pass Studios. <laughs> Hope y'all are doing well. I'm unbelievable as always. And I know you're looking at the screen and wondering why is his face green? Did he eat too many vegetables? Yes, I did. And this is what happens when you eat your vegetables. Just kidding, just kidding. Uh, today's topic on hands-on photography is just going to be a little bit of feedback from the previous episodes where I kept doing all of these different layers and photoshops and masking and stuff like that. And everybody was like, what does all of that mean, Ant? Well, we'll dive into that just a little bit more today and hopefully it'll give you a little bit better understanding of it all. So I figured we'd kick the show off with just a little bit more enthusiasm. Even my man, Mr. Victor, is just rolling out with the mask, looking I, I thought you were standing. I didn't know it was Photoshop masks. I thought <laughs> you're... He says, what? I'm sorry you didn't get the memo. My bad. Yeah. I just hope somebody <laughs> didn't sneeze in this. So. Oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to take this off for the moment and we'll come back. <clears throat> Whew. These things get hot, dude. Holy moly. We'll come back to that in a minute. But yeah, anyway, last week we talked about doing the headshots and I went into all of the extra post processing and you saw all the different layers and all the different steps that were involved in that. And sometimes that can be a little bit mm, intimidating. So we're going to break it down just a little bit. But before that, we're going to do some feedback because I Continue to ask you folks to shoot an email over to hop at twit.tv with your images and critique requests and things of that nature, and you keep sending them, so I'm going to keep bringing them up here on air. So let me pull up this email. This one comes from Mr. Mike DeVitro, and I got that right again because I checked with him. Be sure to give him a follow over on Instagram at mdevitro. Uh, he writes in basically saying, look, I shot this picture back in 2018 with the iPhone X back when it was new. And he loved how it had a nice force perspective, but he was wanting to have some, uh, a little bit of updates to fixing some of the edges and trying to sharpen it up a little bit. There's a couple things that comes to my mind on this image. Uh, first, he mentions force perspective. And secondly, he's mentioning the, the edges that are out of focus. There are a couple of reasons for that. So let's go ahead and pull up his image here in Lightroom. <clears throat> now, I got, I got to give him a little, bit of, a little bit of credit here and a little bit of grief. So Mike, I love me a nice rack of lamb and I love Queen Pruitt. Um, composition wise, brother, I don't know if I'm putting this together. <laughs> I don't know if I'm putting that together, um, but let's go ahead and just dive into this. You talked about force perspective. If you're looking at this screen, you see he has this, this rack of lamb and it gives you this, this tunneling effect that will basically bullseye you to his wife here in the image. Now, force perspective, let's go back. Force perspective is an imp interesting way of shooting photography. You can have a lot of fun with it. What I like to think about is, say if you're out in the city somewhere and you have these nice, beautiful um, skyscrapers in the background, depending on how the photographer takes a picture of you, you can almost look like you're holding the building up or something like that, or even grabbing it. And a lot of, thing, a lot of people like to try to take a picture of like grabbing the sun out of the sky. So depending on the angle of the photographer and how they're shooting, it gives you a whole different force perspective even though, of course, no one is actually grabbing the sun. I'm big, but I'm not that big. But that's, that's one thing to consider when you're trying to figure out, you know, a little bit more of a creative approach with your uh, photography. All right, so now back to this image. 
Oh, you mentioned these soft edges here on this rack of lamb. There's a reason for that. Your iPhone has a very fixed aperture that's really wide open. Normally it's at about f1.8. And if you think back to our previous episodes of the exposure triangle, we talked about having that super low um, f number and it's gonna give you blurred edges and a shallow depth of field. You're not gonna be able to fix that with an iPhone because you cannot control that uh, aperture setting on your phones. So these edges, they're gonna be soft, period. Your only saving grace around this is just to crop it in. And I know that probably defeats the purpose of this shot for you, but that's pretty much the only saving grace to give you a little more clarity in the image. Um, it's not much else you can do. Lastly, I like rosemary but I don't necessarily like Rosemary here in this image because it almost looks like she has a beard. I, I don't suggest that, my man. It, it's, it's <laughs> again, when you're going out shooting your, your photos, a lot of times the photo composition just comes from planning it out or just trying to frame things up. I appreciate you trying on that, but I definitely wouldn't have shot through that with that rosemary right there the way, the way it is in the frame. Because the first thing that I thought was a beard. It took me a second to sort of look at the detail a little bit more to see that it was actual rosemary in there. So that's my two cents on that one. I appreciate you sending that in, but folks, give him a follow over on Instagram. I've checked out his page. That's M DeVitro on Instagram. Check out what he's doing over there and um, give, him, you know, give him a little bit of feedback on some of his other images, all right? So now, before we get into this week's topic, I want to take a brief second just to show a little bit of love to somebody that's hanging out in here in the studio with me today, trying to give me a hard time behind the camera, but that's okay. I got this. We're going to give a shout out to the folks at Smart Tech today, my man Micah Sargent and Matt Casanelli. I know you guys have heard of these folks here. so. Head on over to twit.tv slash STT and check out Smart Tech Today as Micah Sargent and Matt Casanelli go over all the different uh, Internet of Things and smart tech and connected devices that you could use in your home and give you a lot of little shortcuts and tips and tricks and a lot of different things in the IoT world that I'm not so familiar with, but they have broken down a lot of things to help give me a better understanding. So go ahead. Go to twit.tv slash STT, hit the subscribe button and hit the share button and show them some love. Thank you very much. All right. So now we're going to talk a little bit about layers and layer mask inside of Photoshop. So I'm going to go into Photoshop on my computer. And if you can see my screen, I have a couple different tabs up here. OK, because Photoshop allows you to open several images within one session. Now I'm looking at this image here and this one, this was the final output of this particular shot. But if I wanted to do something clever-ish or creative, I will take this image and just drag it over here. Whoops, let's do it this way. Unlock it and then drag it over here like that. And let's say I could just put it right here in the viewfinder, something like that. Now, how did I do that? It's because Photoshop has layers. If I was to turn off this bottom layer right here, all you would see is the image from the other screen. Having layers inside of Photoshop allows you to be a little bit more creative with your shooting and, and composition, and it allows you to pretty much composite things together and just get sort of wild and crazy if you need to. Uh, but this one is, um, yeah, it's a little mild. I can just sort of move it around. If I want to resize it, I can. So let's resize it a little bit to make it fit a little bit better. Something like that. And hit enter. And that looks okay. It doesn't look great, but it looks okay. What I want to do now is sort of make it blend in a little bit better. And that's when I'm going to add a layer mask to this particular layer just by hitting this button right here. And you'll see it gives me this little white square on the, on the right hand side of it that says that we have a mask. The key with layer mask are two things. 
black and white. When you use your, your brush tool and you're painting with black, as you see here on the screen, you're going to hide everything that's on top of your layer. And when you hide it, you're going to reveal everything below it. So let's think about to when we started the show, we had these masks on. So if I put this mask on my face, you know, you can see that I have an additional layer on my face. But think if these were, if the eyes were covered up and it was solid all the way across, you still have the mask. But when you cut the eyes out, that layer mask is allowing you to see underneath my eyes in particular. And it's the same theory when you're using layer mask inside of Photoshop. That's about as layman as I can get it with displaying it. <laughs> layer mask. A lot of people get confused, but it's pretty much the same principle. If you put a bag over your head and cut the eyes out, it's the same theory and the same principle of a layer mask. All right, so back to my screen. So I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna undo what I did because I can make that look a little bit better just by blending the edges a little bit. Something like that. Here we go. And you hear people talk about masking in their photos. And if a person is masking really well, you would never know they used it in their final image. Granted, I don't have my Wacom tablet in here with me, so it's going to be a little bit sloppy with this mouse, but that's starting to look a little bit better. Notice there are no hard edges from what I applied, like so. And then because it's its own separate layer, I still have the freedom to move it and resize it if I want, just to make it fit however I think it should look. And then a, another thing within Photoshop is you have what they call adjustment layers. And all of these adjustment layers are built in right here at the bottom of the menu. And it gives you a lot of different options. So for this one, I want to play around with the levels because I think that's a little too bright. And so we'll scroll down right here and we'll adjust this. Hold on. There we go push that down like that. But you notice when I do this, the whole screen is getting black. That's a problem. I didn't want to do it for the whole screen. I only wanted to do it for that particular layer that I added. So what you need to do is add what's called a clipping mask. And that's this little icon right here. Click in there. Or you can just hold down Alt or Option on your keyboard and click between those two layers. And you'll see now there's an additional little indicator that says, you know what, this levels adjustment layer is only going to work on this layer mask layer. OK, does that make sense? So now I'll go back up here and make some adjustments because I want to make that darker just a little bit. So it blends in a little bit better on the screen. Something like that. Now, that's a pretty simple and straightforward way of using additional layers and layer masks, but you can take it a step further. I have a couple more images here. Let's do, say, a sky replacement. This is Bodega Beach here in Northern California, one of the most beautiful beaches I've ever seen. Uh, boy, we don't have stuff like this on the country. Trust me. Uh, but I wanted to give it a different sky. And I know I'm going, you know, pretty far fetched with it, but hey, have some fun with it. So I'm just going to take this layer and drag it over to this image, drop it in. Holy moly, I lost everything that's on the screen. No worries. This is a layer. We can just add a layer mask and brush away everything that we need to see. And sometimes that can be a little bit difficult for people because you can brush and thinking, oh, man, I brush too much. A good tip that I like to do is check the opacity of the layer that I'm working on and just decrease it ever so slightly. And that gives you a little bit of a guide to see, OK, where do I need to apply my layer mask? Something like that. Now, of course, my brush is a little too soft. I need that brush hardness to be at about 100 percent right now. Something like that. And I'll just brush it in. And this is a rudimentary way of replacing the sky. There's a lot more steps I could do as far as selections and things like that. But this is just a quick 
overview like this. But Aunt, wait a minute, you went too far. You brushed way too much of the sky away. Well, you can fix that. Again, with layer masks, there's only two elements, black and white. When you go too far with paint and black, switch over to paint and white and you can fix it. Just bring it right back. And if you really want to get down into the nitty gritty, yes, zoom in on it so you can see what you're working with. Change your brush size down. Preferably get yourself a Wacom tablet and a stylus. <laughs> and it'll look a lot better doing it that way. See? Nothing to it. All right, so we're going to zoom out. Make my brush bigger quick and dirty. Okay, so now I still want to make it look a little more realistic by blending the, the tone of, of the sky with the rest of the image. So we'll add another adjustment layer. Let's check out, we'll say curves. We'll do that. But we only want the curves to affect this layer here. So we'll just do a little clipping mask like so. And I'm going to drop a point right about there just to try to blend it in a little bit more. It's weird what I see on my monitor in front of me here in the studio is not quite the same as what I see on my screen. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Color calibrations are different, just slightly. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. And granted, there are some other adjustments that we could make to our original layer there at the beach. So why not just add an adjustment layer there? Just click here. There we go. Oh, the opacity, that's what's wrong. That's better, whoo. Didn't catch that. Thank you, Mr. Sergeant. So now we'll go back and fix the curves. Bring the curves up just a little bit better. Now we're talking, that's getting better. And then we can do the same thing for our other layer, the, the background layer, if you will, and we'll make adjustments there, like so. And this is just simple compositing. The expert level of compositing requires a lot more layers, but it's still the same fundamentals. You're just doing different layers, you're doing layer mask, and you're doing adjustment layers, and you're figuring out how to make your adjustments work with each individual layer if you need to, or work as a group all together, okay? Now that layer mask still isn't quite right, so we'll just go in and just paint on it one more time, just to fill in the gaps. There you go. there. Perfect. Now I could soften up the edge a little bit so it blends a little more. So now we have a soft edge brush. So it sort of bleeds into the next layer. Like that. Boom. That's it. It's not the best picture. And <laughs> don't blend a horizon. Yeah, that's a Mm, that's an interesting debate. Trust me. Trust me. All right. So, but that's it. You basically have different layers. You have a mask and you have the opacity to deal with. You have black and white on your layer mask and you can use adjustment layers and figure out what needs to go where. You can adjust saturation and contrast, curves, brightness. Uh, it's a lot of different options in there that you can play around with and you can do it from an individual layer or you can do it as a group. Just depends on your particular project. One of the people I suggest you give a follow is Miss Lisa Carney. She's been a guest on Focus on Photography and she is what's called a photo finisher. So all day long she's spending her time 
going through with a gazillion layers to make all of those different TV posters and movie posters that you see online with Amazon, Netflix, and what have you. And this is all she's doing. She's adding all of these layers, masking out the right people, dropping in additional images and masking them out and making them blend in nice and neat. You'd have no idea if you looked at some of them. You would think they just set it all up. But it's all what they call composite photography and photo finishing. All right. So, Mr. Victor, what do you think? Is this something you, you plan on doing any, any more of? Oh, I've done a lot of these. And they're like this quick and dirty, like a uh, process you just did is good for like, yep. you know, when somebody asks you, like, if you can do something for them really quick. Yep. And uh, or like those uh, memes or something. Right. That you're gonna do. <laughs> but I mean, the, the, the things you did are sound for even um, like they're good starts. And right. Uh, uh, I mean, you, this this if you can this just, looks looks pretty good. You can do a few more. Yeah, there's things, a lot more that like, could be done yeah. from a detail standpoint, especially with that background layer with the with the mountains. I could probably bring out a little more detail and a little more of the shadows. Bring that up a little bit. But, but again, it's just all there. about the basis of yeah. merging these layers together and playing around with it. And quite honestly, a lot of the stuff with compositing. You don't want to do it zoomed out the way that I did. You want to zoom in on your screen so you can see a little bit more detail. And there's a quick shortcut for that, and that's Control Plus on your keyboard. Zoom in as close as you can to see that pixel layer. And if you hold down your space bar, you can just sort of drag it around to see what you're doing. And then when you're done, just Control Minus on your keyboard, and that zooms you back out. Get used to, yeah, or you can use a mouse wheel or control in the mouse wheel. That works too. There's a lot of different shortcuts in there, a lot of different shortcuts. I use a lot of the control plus and minus because most of the time I'm holding a stylus when I'm inside of Photoshop. I don't have my mouse. So your mileage may vary. All right, folks, that is going to do it for this week's episode of Hands On Photography here at twit.tv. I really appreciate you all hopping in and joining us each and every week here at about 2, 2.30 p.m. Pacific time here at the studio. Be sure to hit the subscribe option in your favorite podcatcher of choice and also hit the share options after you've downloaded and given it a listen. Let other people know what you're checking out and let, it, let other people know just what we're doing here at Hands On Photography. So that's twit.tv slash hop, okay? And also... Feel free to send in your images for critiques and ideas and thoughts and questions. Shoot that over to hop at twit.tv. I read them all. I eventually answer them all. It just takes a little bit of time because the Twit army is quite massive. <laughs> it's a lot of you out there. I really do appreciate all the support. All right, folks, until next time, get on out there, create and dominate. We'll catch you later. See you.